Hello, and welcome back to Embracing Your Virtue. I'm your host, Samantha Jasmine. And today I have the pleasure of meeting with two of the three editors of a new book called Keeping the Faith, Reflections on Politics and Christianity in the Trump Era and Beyond. And I have with me Susie LaHood and Cy Hoekstra. Susie is a published author with two MAs in Middle Eastern Studies from the Arab Baptist Theological Seminary in Beirut and Harvard University. She has a BA from Duke University in Russian and Middle Eastern Studies. Her extensive overseas experience includes managing relief and development projects for displaced populations in Lebanon, Syria, and Iraq. Um, also with me is Sai Hoekstra again. He is a graduate of NYU Law School. He's a public defender in the New York City child welfare system. He's he was previously a staff attorney at the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit. Sai earned a BA in history and German literature from Columbia University. He grew up in the Midwest and Northeast, and he's had the pleasure of living abroad in Zurich, Switzerland, in Zurich and Switzerland as a teenager. So Sai, Susie, welcome to my show. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thank you for having us on. We're excited to have this conversation. Thank you. I'm excited to have it as well. So why don't we jump right in? What a timely book, right? Keeping the Faith, Reflections on Politics and Christianity. We are about less than a month away from election season, so I think this topic is so incredibly relevant and timely. So if you guys could, could and whoever you can just jump in, um, can you give us an overview of the book and what inspired its creation? Yeah, so Keeping the Faith is, uh, we're describing it as an anthology of dissent. So it's a collection of essays and articles essentially challenging the notion that Donald Trump is the de facto Christian choice in this election and really seeing this as an opportunity to have a broader conversation that we think needs to be had within the Christian community to start to reclaim the narrative around what it means to be a follower of Christ in the United States and to try to reimagine what it could and should look like for us to engage politically as Christians in this country and, um, and yeah, so it's really trying to address those issues through historical research and also through personal narratives and accounts. We think oftentimes the most powerful way we can connect to these issues is through the lived experiences of, of people. Yeah, that's great. And that was one of the things that I, I really appreciated about the book, um, that it was a diverse group of leaders contributing to the work and that it ranged from personal experience to historical references to biblical references all woven in together. So in, in an era of fake news, right? right and we're in this time where there's so many different sources of information, it's sometimes hard to know what's what. And there's a lot of great data in your book. What efforts did you guys take to ensure that the data that was presented from your various authors was indeed accurate? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, we had, I mean, so first of all, we had our authors uh, cite their work, right? You, their, their end notes in the book, we had a team of people going through those end notes, making sure those citations actually said, uh, you know, what, what the authors claimed that they said. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we, we did our homework in that way. Uh, as we went through the process of editing, we told our authors, you know, other places where we thought they needed citations, where they had to, um, you know, do their math a little bit. And uh, so readers can go and check on that. And then obviously, you know, that's it, it for the essays that are personal narratives, that wasn't the case, right? They're just telling their own stories. But for the for the theological pieces, the historical pieces, we, we definitely put in that effort. That's great. That's great. So why don't we start talking about um, some of the different parts of the book? Um, I'm going to start off with um, Gregory Coles, who's one of the writers in the book, and he mentions, um, so he mentions that someone once told him, let faith be faith and politics be politics, and to keep the two entirely separate. And I've heard similar views, right, that like Jesus is not political, the church is separate from politics and government. So is that true? Like, are, is there a place for Christianity in politics? And the obvious answer considering your book title, but if you guys can just give us a little insight about like why as Christians and from the perspective of Jesus that politics is something that we should be engaged in. Yeah, I mean, it's 
it's interesting because I, I was raised in a similar sort of uh, dispensation and I think uh, Christian atmosphere as Greg in that I was taught that, that politics are sort of a divisive, dirty business and, and even an impediment to the gospel. So we don't talk politics because that just uh, creates unnecessary barriers and, and pulls people apart. And I, I remember a distinct moment growing up. I actually grew up as a married kid in Uzbekistan, actually similar to Greg, who grew up in Indonesia. And there was this moment in high school where I was sitting in my um, one of my classes, and all of a sudden, the then to our, our cell uh, reception cut out, and the internet cut out, and we later found out that it was because um, an atrocity had been sit, had occurred in another city in Uzbekistan and the government was clamping and didn't want the word to get out and in the aftermath of that it really hit me that my family was in this country to share about the gospel of Jesus Christ and to represent the church and and serve the church at the same time these horrible things were being uh horrible things were occurring in the country that we actually also needed to be able to address and talk about as the community of faith and, and I know that's an extreme example, um, but at the same time, I think it, it brings on the point that we as Christians should care about politics because um, we care about people. Mm-hmm. And Christ, I think, is, is, has a political message to the extent that he cares about people. And so I think that's where we need to figure out how to vote our values and how to engage politically in a way that is in line with our values, um, but across the sector, holistic way. And, and I, and, you know, Greg's answer in his own essay, I mean, what he says is, um, you know, that, that failing to talk about something doesn't inoculate you against its dangers. So uh, it, it kind of reminds me, I had a, uh, a pastor for a long time, his name is John Tyson in, in New York City, and he really drove home the point that there's there's really no such thing as a neutral space in society. Like you, the world around you is trying to shape you and form you and make you think uh, one way. And we as disciples of Jesus have to intentionally reform ourselves, like reform ourselves to think a different way, to think in line with how God thinks. And so, you know, I think if you fail to talk about how your faith impacts your politics, then your politics are just going to be whatever's around you in the society. You know, you're just going to be influenced by, um, by what you're hearing from, from everywhere. And, um, you know, so then it, it sort of just by default becomes something that you are not putting under uh, the kingdom of God, that you're not bringing, you're not, you're not integrating your faith in that way. Uh, and I don't, I don't think that's something that we're, we want to be doing. Right. Yeah. I think that's so powerful. I think, Susie, to your point, politics, you know, ideally the government is there to serve the people, ideally, right? And as, as believers, our job is to serve people, right? And so there's, there's almost no way of serving people if we're not concerned about the, the things that are affecting them, you know, including the, the way in which the government is treating them or mistreating in, in certain senses. And yeah, si, I, I think that's great, right? Like even silence is a position almost. Yeah. Right? Or inaction is in some ways complicit, you know, being complicit. Um, it's, it's a, it, it's a, um, it, it's a supporting of the status quo. Right, right. Yeah, yeah I think that's great. Um, so I think, you know, there are some people who don't think that we should be in politics, but there are, there, you know, for I think in this era of Trump, there has been maybe an, even a spike in political interest from a lot of American evangelicals. Mm. Um, so can we talk about the ways in which, you know, American Christians have begun to intermingle with politics, you know, in the, in the last couple of years and how that's evolved? Well, I think that, I think that question is a great question. And I think it touches on um, one of the purposes of the book, and I think one of the misconceptions around the book, um, in the sense that one of the things that we seek to sort of critique and complicate through this book, and it, this is going back to the idea that this is about a specific time and moment in our nation, um, but it's also 
opens a door into a broader conversation that we've needed to have for a very long time. These are things that have been developing over the course of decades. And, and one of the things that we, we we're talking about specifically is this notion that being a Christian in America means that you are a member of the Republican Party and that that's how you vote. You vote according to that party line. And that, that can be a very dangerous thing because anytime that you say a, a political party or platform is the de facto party of God, that, uh, that's very dangerous. And historically, there are so many examples of how that can lead to, um, it can lead people to engage in ways that are not critical and can blind them to the ways that they are hurting particularly the marginalized in their society or are oppressing those who are not like them um, in a way that feels very comfortable because we don't question what we're doing. We just think as long as we go with what the leaders in this party are saying, we're okay. And so I think that that's also a misconception ironically about the book is that folks have looked at what we're doing and, and we've heard some, some criticism that, oh, well, are you just sort of now going on the opposite side and endorsing the other party. And what we're trying to, to explain is that it's not about endorsing any party. It's just about saying that we as Christians need to be fully engaged and we need to question more than I think we have in the past. And, and also that the issue is that particularly in the case of the Trump administration, we are dealing with a leader who actively court the Christian and particularly white evangelical vote and tries to create a platform that claims to be anointed by God and of God. And that, again, is a really, really dangerous thing that we need to be wary of and critical of. So that's part of the work that we're trying to do in the book. And also, we don't necessarily, we think that evangelical support of Trump or Christian support of Trump in general is is not actually the problem in and of itself we think of it as a manifestation of problems that have been going on for a long time mm -hmm. um so even though we have trump's face on the cover of our book and it's, it that's that's not actually um we're, we're not saying that this is just about this man um so i i uh you know we appreciate the opportunity to talk about it here yeah yeah i think that's great yeah and i, I think there is a temptation to feel like well, there is a temptation to think that, oh, well, if you're not this, then you're automatically that, mm. right? Like, if, if, you're, if you are not a Trump supporter, then you must be a Democrat, and you must believe and follow everything that their party represents. Um, and so I think what's great about the book is that it's reminding us that we, like, we, we are, we're set apart from these two worldly systems, and we need to think about things outside of that as we vote. Um, so we have people in the book who are lifelong Republicans who are just now saying, I'm not voting. This is, this is too much. This is too far. This is a step uh, uh, beyond where I'm willing to go. Right. Um, so, right, it, it's definitely not about necessarily being a Democrat. Some of our contributors are Democrats also. You know, it, 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 it's, it's a wide range of people. Right, right. Yep, that's great, right? This is not paid for by Joe Biden. Like <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> like that cooler. Yeah, so I, I, that's great. And, you know, one of a friend of mine, you know, we were having a conversation back and forth by text. Um, and, you know, his, his response was, I don't support everything um, about the Trump administration per se, but I think he'll still represent God more so than Biden and Harris. I'm wondering, like, how do you guys answer that question when it's given to you? I'm not, I think in line with what Susie just said, I'm not necessarily looking for someone to represent God <laughs> as, a, as a presidential candidate. Like, just, like you said, we're set apart from that, right? That's not, so I, I think what you're saying is you need to balance your values and the, and the policies that are put forth by both candidates. Um, I, I think though also partially our response is the book, right? <laughs> the book the book goes into a lot of detail and a lot of specific points of policy on abortion and foreign policy and uh, immigration and, and um, other issues. And so we have a, a, a lot in there for anyone who wants to go deeper on like one specific subject that they're concerned about. 
So guys, this has been a great conversation and we're just getting started. So we're going to invite everyone to stay tuned for part two, which will be available right away so that you can continue the discussion that we're having on the book, Keeping the Faith, Reflections on Politics and Christianity in the Era of Trump and Beyond.